So I was browsing Dread earlier today and I saw this post that was actually made by a hidden marketplace admin, not a Dread admin, but you know, an admin of a hidden marketplace that advertises on Dread. And I'll just tell you up front, whoever the guy is that made this post, he must be very, very confident in his OPSEC, okay? He's very brave, uh, dare I say a little bit based, and possibly even a little bit foolish. Okay, watch till the end and let me know what you think about it in the comments below. And speaking of based, my open base shirt is available on base.win and you can save 10% off on base.win store wide when paying in the base cryptocurrency Monero XMR. So let's get into this post on Dread, man. So this is made by uh, the user Big Boss uh, Chef, Chief, I don't know what that's supposed to mean, uh, of Archetype. And this is um, his name on uh, Archetype, like if you're actually on that forum, marketplace, whatever, is Obama Phone. And the title of this post is an open letter to governments and law enforcement. He's calling them right out, guys. After Archetype became the number one market since ASAP announced his retirement, I think not only will this market be in the focus of the government and consequently law enforcement with an immense and disproportional amount of resources more than ever, but I also think the attention can be used for something more impactful than Archetype being taken down one day. I know you, deep down, already know, well, you hate to admit, but such a takedown will not change anything at all. Let me elaborate and give some food for thought. It's a little bit difficult to read. Uh, we have not created this issue. We have not created the market around archetype. The drug market has evolved and exploded over the past decades. We are not the reason humans crave drugs more than ever. Again, we have not created this market. This is something only corporations, worlds, bigger and more powerful than our small project here do. Truly bad humans. They create issues and provide the solution. We did not create any issue. It was there before and will remain when we are gone. Deep problems in our system and society did. If you don't notice rising tension in people living lives they would prefer not to live the way they do left and right. There could be two reasons for this. You don't want to notice or you're blatantly lying. What we are actually doing, however, is fueling and pushing an inevitable radical change. Everyone reading this can name someone who should cut down on ibuprofen and a glass of wine or other socially accepted drugs. There are nothing other than that drugs. In addition, Usage of illegal drugs is probably more common than one might think. Judging from a few customers whose information went past my eyes as part of our work supporting their purchases. Behind both of this lies the same drive. They are looking to improve their current life and feeling. Why would they do that if everything is great? Coming back to the introduction of this letter, we have not created this issue. In fact, I think we are as much resisting the pointless solution by the government giving tremendous resources to hunt dealers and operators of services like ours in order to push said government into a new proper solution as we improve the problems of a business sector with such a strong economic structure and the illegal nature of it brings with it at the same time. Rival gangs literally taking out lives that mean nothing to them, robbery and attacks on in-person transactions, and no way to have a visible reputation tied to a vendor that is closely being watched by an independent staff team to reduce harm caused by substances as good as possible. Believe it or not, the only game clashes we have are kindergarten discussions about reviews. We also don't want something stolen from someone, which is why we are mainly about drugs and don't allow credit cards or other fraudulent goods here. While this all sounds great, we surely cannot ignore the fact that some person might have lost their life as a result of a trade on this platform, rather than as a direct customer and user or by being a customer from a reseller of our platform's products in real life. I hope the number for this is close to zero, and I am truly sorry for every negative impact this site also has, but I am also confident that we saved more of them with this platform. They will buy the drugs with or without a digital way of doing it that puts a barrier between rival dealers 
and the customer and their dealer. Some even need to purchase products here as literal medicine because they just cannot afford it going the legal way. While I'd love to see nobody taking any drugs at all, we clearly try to make the inevitable as pleasant as possible. Just again, the underlying issue does not go away with us. Shouldn't it make you think that I ask you to address the core issue, which would make archetype and all market, all future markets obsolete at some point, or at the very least, reduce the customer base quite a bit. When I was a kid, I used to think that law enforcement and the police as the front line of it is protecting us from evil. The government wants the best for all of us. They protect you from the man in black coming into your house at night. I quickly realized it is not quite as simple. I absolutely believe there are heroes without capes amongst them. Think cases like No Limits Fun and Peter Scully. I applaud and thank you for your work. But when you look at how resources are wasted hunting down markets just for the next one to pop up a few weeks later, you might think about it again. The agencies and agents involved will be looking forward to a great career after an operation like that, and they are the definition of just doing their job. But who was saved by this? Wasn't your initial motivation to make the world a better and safer place? Not even your experiment of putting Ross into prison for multiple lives has made an impact. And when they're talking about Ross, they're talking about Dread Pirate Ross, creator of the Silk Road. To be fair, it did have an impact. You showed your tyranny and the world was watching. Over 500,000 people have signed his petition by now. You motivated some of us to continue his legacy. I don't think this is the impact you were looking for, though. You wanted to make an example out of him with a sentence that is so out of range that it is hard to grasp. You ended his life for the mistakes you make, while he started something back then, he also did not create the market nor the issue. Not everyone in the history of markets had the same motivation. Looking at all the exit scams, I must admit that I fear most are in it for the money. There is nothing wrong with doing it for money, and the money is the money to be earned in this economic sector is quite inviting for sure. They are just playing the game they were put into when they were born into the system. While I hate to say this, even the exit scammers did their part here. Every single market showed you over and over again, you will never stop this, ever. You may arrest me tomorrow, you may arrest me in a week, I'm not hiding in paranoia, and I'm not running. After this letter, you might rub your hands when you got me for having the audacity to address the real issue you should work on. I almost feel sorry to tell you the following about a potential bust of any market or staff member. You have accomplished nothing other than potentially collecting some money and making the average Doe feel better in front of his television at night when he sees agents in suits patting one another over their great success against horrible crime. I wouldn't even be surprised if you let markets grow just to have more money to collect in case you manage to do so. I will be replaced overnight. Even the entire market will be replaced with the next head of the Hydra in no time. You might put my body in a cell. Some of us might even be traded as capital between countries for money and favors. Isn't it funny how justice works? However, it doesn't matter to me. This is bigger than you and me. Please start working on the root cause. We are a symptom. We are archetype. This letter was not approved, written, or read by other staff members of archetype prior to publication. Their opinions, motivations, and beliefs may vary greatly. Written by archetype staff member Obama phone. So there was a whole lot written there, but... Honestly, I agree with just about everything that Obama phone said here. Uh, so the problem that he's talking about, of course, is drug use. And that is not a problem that dark web marketplaces created. Okay, every substance on there, for the most part, has existed long before dark web marketplaces, long before computers even. Uh, or at least, you know, chemical derivatives of substances that existed before then are probably mainly what's sold on there. Um, and it's one of those things that we really know for a fact prohibition of these substances doesn't work. Here in America, we had the prohibition of alcohol. Okay, alcohol was illegal for a period of time. And almost immediately after alcohol was made illegal, you had this criminal circuit that got created. You know, Al Capone came up as a bootlegger. That's how he made his money. You know, that's how 
uh, those mafias really came into play. And I think the Gulf Cartel as well. You know, they originally got started by smuggling alcohol into America from, you know, through the Gulf of Mexico from Mexico. Uh, and to this day, they're obviously still in business, except they're just smuggling other substances that are illegal, uh, as well as human trafficking and all that other stuff. So, uh, but, you know, focusing on the illegal substances, clearly the prohibition isn't working. I'm also pretty sure that the percentages of addicts and, and things like that, you know, when we talk about the public health issue, right, because that's the whole reason for these laws, right, is we don't want people addicted. We don't want people committing crime to feed their addictions. We don't want people dying from their addictions and, you know, reducing their quality of life, reducing the quality of lives of people around them. But none of those percentages have shifted. OK, everything is more or less the same, whether these substances are legal or illegal. And in some cases, they're a whole lot worse. Uh, again, here in America, we have more people incarcerated per capita than any other country on the planet. Right. This is supposed to be land of the free. But yet we have the most prisoners. And when you start looking into what people are in jail for, by and large, it's for things to do with substances, okay? Possession, distribution, manufacturing, et cetera, et cetera. Uh, so I'm, I'm pretty much with him, with, uh, you know, Obama phone, with the idea that the government putting all this effort, all this resources, all these taxpayer monies into busting these markets, it's, it's really just a waste of time. The whole reason that these markets exist is because of the prohibition of these substances. If you could go to CVS or Walgreens and buy these substances, there would be no archetype. They can't compete with CVS and Walgreens. Are you kidding me? I don't know how many uh, you know, billions of dollars those companies are worth, but obviously they've got the storefronts, they've got the distribution, they've got the supply chains, okay? They could make Pablo Escobar and El Chapo and all these guys look like a complete joke. And that's the other thing too, you know, by these substances being illegal, these people who are, you know, I guess the real bad guys, right? Like the cartels, these people who are littering the streets with bodies and dismembering people and you know, putting videos of it online and stuff like that. These guys are so rich because of this prohibition. Again, they couldn't compete with the American pharmaceutical industry, uh, especially when you look at the substances that are actually being sold, because the majority of the money in substances is in stuff that's completely manufactured. Okay, it's no longer in the uh, organic stuff that you might have to get from Colombia, right? It's in uh, the kind of stuff that Breaking Bad was based on, which can be completely made within a laboratory anywhere in the world. Um, it's stuff like, um, you know, fentanyl, which again, made in a laboratory, can be made in a laboratory basically anywhere in the world. And people choose to do these substances at the end of the day, okay? Adults who know the risk, or at least you hope that they know the risk. Okay, that's kind of where harm reduction comes into place instead of uh, teaching people that things are more harmful than they actually are or just lying to them about what stuff does. Instead, teach them about LD50s, teach them about responsible use, and, and obviously advise them not to use substances. But at the end of the day, an adult is going to do what an adult is going to do. Um, and other things like overdoses could also, I believe, largely be curbed by legalization. So even on the dark web where you have, I guess, some level of effort to regulate stuff, you know, obviously there's admins, so maybe it's a little bit more regulated than the streets. You still have vendors on there that sell fake stuff. Uh, one of one thing that's apparently really rampant on the dark web is people selling opiates, um, you know, I guess heroin or, or, you know, whatever other nickname for it. And it's not actually that it's synthetic, you know, it's um, fentanyl and, and maybe even carfentanyl in some cases, which is like a, 
It's like fentanyl for elephants or something. I mean, this stuff's crazy, crazy strong. And granted, there are people out there who use that. I mean, they're, you know, I guess such an addict to regular opiates that that's the only thing that really gets them off or whatever. But for your average Joe, you know, for your average person that thinks they're getting China white or whatever, if they try this stuff and it's fentanyl, it's going to kill them. Uh, so that's another issue, which to me is one of the biggest issues with um, just substance abuse in general, which could largely be curbed by legalization. I mean, if you had something that's, you know, you can buy at a drugstore or a liquor store, or maybe have designated dispensaries like they have for weed or whatever, and it's dosed out for you, I, I really think that would reduce overdoses, or at least it would make it um, less likely for somebody to have an accidental overdose. Now, as far as, um, you know, obviously I agree with the spirit of this post, but uh, this post itself being made by someone who is a dark web admin. I mean, this is, um, you know, Obama phone. He's the administrator of a uh, hidden marketplace. This is the kind of thing that I would consider to be pretty bad OPSEC. And here's the reason why. So obviously, um, Obama phone, you know, whoever the real person is that wrote this is speaking English or writing English as a second language, right? There's a lot of grammatical mistakes, um, possibly some spelling mistakes. And this is also kind of the case if you actually go to uh, Archetype. I, I don't think I'm actually gonna show Archetype this site because this, you know, this video is already in enough danger as it is, uh, even though it's purely for educational and technical purposes. But um, you know, if you go there for, yourself, you'll see that there are some spelling mistakes and grammatical mistakes throughout like the instructions of the website. So that's the kind of thing where law enforcement is going to make a copy of that. And they're also going to compare it to data that they have mined. So remember, the NSA is collecting every plain text text message that goes through on the internet, right? Because it, you know, if it's a regular SMS, that's not encrypted. And even if you're like, oh, I don't use SMS, but maybe you use WhatsApp, right? You have uh, maybe some relatives that are in another country, you know, that's a reason I commonly see in the comments for why people need to use WhatsApp. Okay, that's end-to-end -end encrypted with Facebook's encryption. Facebook works hand-in-hand -hand with law enforcement. Um, and with busting people on the dark web for certain things, as I've talked about on this channel. So if this person is using similar uh, texting styles, you know, to what they have written here in their WhatsApp messages, that stuff could be mined as well and possibly used to unmask this person's identity. Uh, not to mention that he's obviously calling out law enforcement, right? He's trying to make them, uh, I guess, feel guilty about whatever it is they're doing, you know, their investigation into uh, archetype or other uh, hidden marketplaces. So maybe that's going to be something that causes them to target this person a little bit more specifically. Um, but yeah, let me know what you guys think in the comments below. Do you agree with the sentiment? Do you uh, kind of feel the same way that I do that posting something like this with all of this text that can be mined and analyzed and possibly used to de-anonymize you uh, as a hidden marketplace admin is a bad idea. Let me know in the comments below. Like and share to hack the algorithm. Have a great rest of your night.